Okay, so good morning, everyone. Even this week, number nine, if I don't, if I'm not wrong, of the course. So we are approaching the end, the last uh, of a stretch of four or five weeks. And um, today, I want to start uh, by completing, you said, some uh, uh, smaller topic that uh, we left over from from the last lecture uh, concerning the. Um, creation or recreation or destruction of components, okay? Um, so you remember we had the discussion when uh, talking about the edit functionality, okay? And so when we want to edit one element uh, in the code that we developed together last week, uh, uh, we, have, we create a new form, a new component uh, that gets its uh, initial value from properties and then, of course, uh, uh, these initial values go into state variables, uh, and they ca so they can be changed uh, by the user. Okay. Uh, if we want to edit another component, we must first uh, cancel this editing, or save, or commit, to say, this editing action, and then we can edit another component because we disabled uh, this button. Okay, that was a good choice for us. But uh, uh, I want to explore today: what if we don't disable this button? What happens? Okay. Um, and uh, this means that we just have to modify probably the exam actions component that we had where we had this uh, disabled uh, attribute that was depending on the editing mode and let's just get rid of that okay so I don't want to lose it uh, so I put it in a comment somewhere here Uh, okay. okay, so before we decided to disable these buttons, uh, the interface would look the same and will work the same. So if we go into edit, uh, of, of course we can edit it, we can go back uh, and edit another and so on. So it still works, okay? But I selected the second one, system and device programming. What happens if I try to click on edit uh, or delete while this form is open. Okay, clicking on delete is not a big issue. It will just delete that item by leaving the form open. If I, there's a wrong strength, a strange thing that happens that if, if I try to delete uh, uh, the currently open uh, form because the exam would, would be deleted, uh, but the form will still be open. So it's a corner case that we, we didn't consider last time, okay, because we imagine that in the editing functionality, the other buttons were disabled. But this is not the, the point I wanted to make. Uh, the point is uh, about the edit, okay? I clicked on edit for the first one. Then let's see what happens if I click on edit for the second one. I did click, but nothing happened, even for the third one. So is there something wrong with this edit button? Let's have a look at the components of the form. I say, sorry, the property of the form. So if I inspect this form here, this add exam form component there with the component inspector, what I see is some state variables that of course they match uh, the content of the form and some properties where, where the prop here, which basically uh, is the uh, specify the edit mode give some callbacks uh, and the uh, current exam, the props uh, that we use to initialize the form, okay? Now, if I click on another edit button, like we did before, I see, we should see here, that uh, the properties change, okay? The prop edit, edited exam, sorry, it's a bit small, but if I make it too large, I could cannot read anything else. Okay, if I click on a, on different edit buttons, uh, the property of the component below change as they should. Okay, remember that clicking on edit uh, um, changes uh, some uh, state. Uh, clicking on edit uh, calls the edit exam callback. Edit exam is defined in the edit table, the edit exam table, 
and the edit exam changed the edit mode, okay, it was edit, it will it still be edit, and it will change the edit exam. So actually when I click on the edit button, I am changing the state. And by changing the state uh, in the exam table component, the state that I'm changing is called exam, this exam, blah, 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 in edit mode is used, set edited exam is used here. Edit exam for initializing no, as a prop. And this is the prop that we are seeing, we've seen that is changing correctly. So the edit button will correctly call the callback. The parent component will correctly update the state this state is correctly passed as a prop, and the prop is correctly understood and received by the lower component. So why didn't the, uh, the form content change? Okay, the, the, the issue is, uh, uh, no, it's the exam form. Exam, at the exam form here. The issue is all here. We have, we have the state variables that uh, uh, contain the current, uh, the control that we use to control the input elements. Okay, right. And uh, in edit mode, we initialize them with the props. And the props are changing. But the component is not. The add exam form component, when I click on edit the first time, this component is created. When I click on edit the second time, it will trigger a re-render of the page, but React sees that there is already an add exam form component in that place. So no need to render a new one. I can still use the current one, of course, by changing the properties. Changing this change in the properties will propagate through all of the code. And so if there is anything that will depend on properties down here, it will change except this initialization, which is not performed a second time. Uh, the initialization is only, or, or the state variables is only performed when the component is created, okay? Uh, otherwise it would, be, it would be strange because the state would not be a state really, because every time we change the property, they would be recomputed from scratch. And so it will not be remembered across different renders. So this is what we want. We want the state variables to be persistent. But we would also like <laughs> to control when they are initialized. And the rule of React is the states are initialized when the component is created. Okay, so we, if we keep changing the input property of, of a component which is already there, this property will change, but the state will not be initialized uh, every time. Hmm. What can we do? Okay, so is, is the problem clear? Um, the issue is uh, again that of uh, a state replication. We have a state in the parent component that was called the edited exam and we are constructing a state in a child component uh, that in some way copies a value of another state. And when we do that, uh, we always should expect some issues, some problems, okay? So it's not a surprise. Uh, we are initializing state from property. So one of the rules, uh, among the rules of the state management, of the good state managers, never replicate state. Uh, and uh, the another, okay, I wouldn't say don't uh, initialize state from properties, but because I cannot forbid it, but uh, I would say be very careful when you initialize state from properties because then it's not under your control when the, when the, the properties are, are changed, are reinitialized again. So what can we do? By the way, if I close this form, we have computer architectures here, and we edit another exam, everything works well, because when I close the form, the component is destroyed because it's no longer uh, part of the, of the render tree. So all those state variables go away, and the next time I open the component, uh, the next time React will render the component, okay, it's a new component for it. And so new state variables will be created and the current value of the properties 
will be used to initialize the value. Hmm? So it was working well before, okay? Uh, just because we were forced by the interface to close and recreate it. Okay, so far so good. What if we really want to be able to click on the different edits uh, and uh, have this uh, uh, form update? Well, we would, there are two ways. No? One is the wrong way, is trying some tricks uh, to destroy and recreate the component. So while clicking on, uh, on the edit, uh, go to a fake page where the uh, component is not there and then immediately come back. So change a state uh, to an intermediate state where the page is rendered without a component and then immediately set it back to the right value. But uh, we can, it works uh, as, as a clutch basically, uh, but we can easily lose control of what uh, we are doing if we try doing, playing some tricks uh, by trying um, let's say to force React to render components in a given order. The best way is to use the, we mentioned that briefly in the last uh, 30 seconds uh, in the la uh, last week, uh, to use a, a key attribute on the component we, that we are going to render. Basically, uh, key, uh, the key attribute, we already know it, uh, it's uh, uh, mandatory whenever we create a list uh, in order to be able to distinguish uh, and to identify the, uh, the single elements of the list. We can also use key on a standalone component, which is not part of a list. And uh, the mechanism is that uh, if the key changes, React knows that it's a, it's a different, it should be treated as a different component, as a different instance. And so if I'm rendering the same, com the same type of component in the same place with the same key, it will retain the same component. If I'm rendering the same component in the same place with a different key, it will rebuild the component. So by changing the key, I am actually forcing React to forget about the previous component and create a new one. And this is probably what we want here. So we just need no, for this to work, uh, to add the key attribute uh, to the edit form functionality. So when we are instantiating the add exam form, that is more or less, I don't remember where, exam table here. In edit mode, I try to add a key attribute, uh, something unique, uh, that reflects when the exam has changed. So for example, it could be the editing exam, edited, edited exam, dot code. Not the whole object, just the code. Okay. So if I'm clicking on edit on a different uh, exam, different from the one that I'm currently changing, then the key would change and I ex expect the form to be reset to the starting value. So let's see if the theory is right. Let's reload it just to be sure. Change, edit. So we see now that uh, the props, where am I? Not the exam table, but the form. You see that the form is a key now listed next to it. Uh, that correspond to the exam, the first one currently being edited. And the props, of course, match uh, the key value. And we have the state value that are being uh, initialized. I can start editing that, but if I click on a different edit button, actually the form is reset, uh, reinitialized to the new values, because the, where is that? The key here value has changed and the component is being recreated with a new state, okay? So whenever I change it, you also see that the, the component inspector here is losing the focus. If I click on a different button, it loses the, because the component where that was selected in that moment uh, goes away. And so the, 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 the cursor goes back to the, to the initial state, to the initial uh, component, to the father component, okay? So it's actually a different component for all purposes. 
Okay, so if we are in this position, uh, this could, could be one solution to forcing a different key to a component, and so that, uh, ah, by the way, if I, of course, uh, if I edit one component and I click on editing the same button, nothing happens, okay? So if I try to change something and click edit on the same component which is already open, I'm resetting the state to the same values as before, so the props, when they are compared, are not changing, and the key is not changing, so I can continue to edit the component without losing uh, its previous values. But of course, as soon as I change, the key changes and the form is reset. I, I, I wouldn't recommend this, this behavior. Huh? It's better to control which uh, uh, actions the user sh should do. But if, we, if you find yourself in need of, of, uh, of controlling this sort of uh, initial values, uh, this is the easiest solution. Just controlling the key and then React does everything else. Hmm? Okay, let's, uh, we can keep the key here. It doesn't do any harm, but I'd like to reset, uh, to reinstate the disabling of the button because at least from the usability point of view, it's better so that the user can only have the actions that uh, make sense in that context. Okay, so that was for the last to leftover topic from, from last week. Mm -hmm. It's just a detail, but it can turn out to be useful. Okay, now they are uh, disabled, so I can't play anymore. Um, another short topic before we go into the bigger topic for today is that of uh, uh, context. Context is something quite easy to get, um, which is a possible solution against uh, um, the need of passing the state uh, through many layers of component. Okay, you we find uh, that. Uh, a lot of work when you are creating a hierarchy of components is uh, being sure to propagate all the properties and all the needed states from the component that defines the state to down to the component that needs uh, its value for display, for example. Okay, and so we have this uh, sort of drilling down through many components. Uh, there are many components that just receive a value, don't need it actually. They only need it to pass to their children. Okay, so it's extra work for any component to pass down the, com the value until some component down below really needs uh, to use that value. So there's a trick to, let's say, uh, I would uh, summarize context as a teleporting of properties or state. So we can define one state value in a component, uh, you know, of course, in a further component, uh, and have it available in a lower component without the need of passing through all the intermediate steps. Like global, like global variables, hmm, something a little scary, but uh, uh, it may save us some typing hmm, if we use that in, a, in, a, in the correct use cases. Uh, there are not many use cases where I would suggest this, okay? So for example, in the the list of exams, the, the, the application state, uh, I don't think it should be in a, uh, in a context variable, it should be available, uh, should, I don't think it should be automatically available to all the applications, all, to all the components. Huh? I want to control how the state evolves, uh, so I don't want everybody being able to mess with that. But there are some use cases, like for example, uh, the, the language. Okay, so if I, you have a website that is in uh, Italian or in English, uh, you have a component somewhere, probably up in the tree, in the layout, in the navigation bar, that can change the language, and every other component in the page uh, would need to know this language, to you know, customize, to translate uh, every text, uh, every button, every image or whatever, to the correct language. So it's a property that should be available to every every component. And so it would be very boring to add language equal props.language 
every time I instantiate any component. So that's a, a candidate for a global state uh, to be shared by all the applications. Um, another topic would be the visual theme, dark or, or, um, or, or white theme. Okay, so if you have an application that we can change the visual um, aspect, uh, then it's a global state variable that would be needed probably by everybody, mm -hmm. and so on. Or, and we'll see that, uh, this uh, later, the login status. So if you have uh, an application with a login or operation that would recognize the user, well, information about the user would be probably also needed uh, in many places about the, of the application. So maybe the username or the user icon. If, uh, for example, if you have a chat application, the user icon should be repeated thousands of times in all the messages. Or even just uh, the information whether the user is logged in or not. So there are some parts of the page that should be hidden if the user is not logged in correctly, so the public parts. Uh, or and some others that should only and, and some other parts that should only be shown to if the user is logged in and vice versa. So again, this is an information <coughs> that is very clear. It's uh, concerning the whole application, not a specific data, not a specific information. It's a state of mind, let's say, of the application, and it's available as needed in, um, may I say, many unpredictable places throughout all the application. Okay, there's a component down there, okay, but I need to render it differently whether they use logged in or not because it's just the count of messages or whatever, the status bar. Or. So there are many places that pop up and then it would be difficult, say, just to say, or would be, let's say, an, an unnecessary friction for me to say, okay, I need this information down there and so let me change these other 27 components in order to get the information there, okay? So it would probably <laughs> play against me putting that information, say, okay, pff, it's too, too much work, I don't want to do that. Hmm? So in that case, <coughs> it's, uh, it may be useful to put this information about the user. Are you logged in or not? What is your username? What is your email? What is your uh, avatar icon or whatever? Some uh, useful information to be available to everybody. Hmm? And uh, there are not many other cases uh, where we want actually to share data so widely. Hmm? So how does it work? Uh, a, the context for, context is the name of this uh, teleporting mechanism, has three ingredients, okay? One is a context object, the second is a context provider, and the third one is a context consumer. Okay, uh, the context objects uh, is the teleporting mechanism. The context provider is the where we inject the value, and the cost and consumer is where we receive the value. Uh, to create a context provider, we must call this function create context uh, on the global React object. That would create a new context. So every time we have create, a create content, we create a new context object, okay? And we can save these context objects here. And we must be sure that this object, which is the, the handle, the key for accessing this mechanism, should be visible to every component that needs this value. So normally we put this uh, in a separate file and we import that file directly. Okay, and this file will export uh, this object. We can import the file and have a reference to this object. It's a way of having a globally unique object, uh, putting that into a module and uh, um, importing that module. Um, okay. This object actually has two properties. One is called dot provider and the other is dot consumer. They are both uh, components in the, in the React sense, okay? So they can be instantiated. So it's a, it's a normal object, hmm, a JavaScript object with two properties. This, these two properties just happen to be React components. So we can use a, a, a provider for setting the value. 
So if we use this, con this component, uh, content object dot provider, and we can set a property, the prop which is called value, that will set the value of this component. So where does this value come from? Well, it comes from props or from state. Inside the context provider, this value will be a constant. So, but the component where we are rendering this provider may have a variable, a state uh, information to inject. So, imagine we have the, um, the application component that contains the user logged in state, and this is a state in the app component that will be set to true or false uh, by the login component, which will be a separate uh, button or whatever. Uh, and so we, we want this, this information to be available to everybody. We should inject uh, in the, say, user context dot provider value equal to the user, user login status, for example. So we turn, um, we copy, let's say, the value of a state into the provider, okay? This value, this is a component, okay? So we can render it into the tree. This value is accessible to all the nested components. So actually, the value is not accessible to every component, but only from the components that are rendered inside this provider. So we can at least control which portion of the application we want to, to broadcast this information. So we can put this provider up on a higher level of the application, at the up level more or less, and so it will be available everywhere. But in order to be able to receive a value, a context value, you should have, uh, your component should be nested below, but one of your fathers should be the a context provider for that specific value. We may have many context values, each of them is independent, and we, we recognize them by the object. Remember, this X context is the object that we just created. Uh, so every time we create context, we hold one variable, one value, and we can inject the new value for this variable by okay, using that specific context object. And then, when we want to, and usually we do this once. In one component, where the state is located, we just provide it uh, to the components below. So most likely this would be in the same component where we have the use state uh, for the value. And uh, uh, in all the other components, uh, as long as they are nested inside of the provider, we can render a consumer object uh, or maybe it's easier to use the use context uh, hook that uh, gives you access to the current value. So use context received as a parameter the context object, and we return the current value. Of course, when the state changes, the prop of the provider changes, and the use context will update the value, of course, with a new value, hmm? will be automatically updated every time so instead of getting it from a prop you can uh, get it from this hook the other alternative is also possible rendering a consumer uh, component it's a bit uh, more code to write because the body of the consumer should be a callback function that receives the context value and returns the actual code to be rendered so it's more braces to write hmm? but it's equivalent. Um, I think this copy, this slide doesn't tell us much more than the previous one. Uh, so let's see a, a very simple uh, application uh, with the, uh, the example of uh, localizing or say having a, an application that can be translated, okay? Uh, so for example, we have some text here and we have a button they would set the language of the application. And by clicking on the button, we uh, transform the language. 
oh there's nothing new we already know how to do that we set a state with the language and we can just pass this information through with properties nothing new we already know how to do that but if we want to do it with context uh, um, so the application uh, function uh, component of course needs uh, a state variable that remember the current language and this state variable there should be some event uh, no, to, to change the state. Okay, nothing new. Now we have the, the both, the, both components, the welcome component and the button component uh, should use the information about this uh, language that we have set through this button. And uh, how to do that? One possibility is uh, to store to copy, say, the language state into a context variable. So we should first uh, create one, one module, one file, where we have the definition of the context, creation of the context object. It's a, one file with just three lines, okay? We create a context in a, give it a name and export this name. Okay. We call it language context because it's the content that we will use to transport the language state. And uh, uh, in the app.js, okay, we should also import the, this object language context from the language context file. So we are not creating the create content is not inside app. Okay, it's, it's a separate file. Why? Because it, of course, it needs to be accessible from app, but it also needs to be accessible from any other component. From any other component, it would be defined in separate files. So we should be sure that this symbol here, this language, language context symbol, is accessible from any component that wants to import it. And there is a mechanism in importing modules. Uh, that where the code of, the, of each module is only run once. So if we have the same module, which is imported by three or four different files, the code is really executed only once, the first time you find the import statement. And all the other times you are just referring to the ver to this, uh, variables that were already uh, defined. So importing a module is different from calling a function. Calling a function will uh, if you call a function from seven different files, the function will be called seven times. If you import the same module from seven different files, the code is only run once and the result is available to everybody. Okay? That we are, we are using, say, modules as a mechanism for singletons, for creating unique values to be shared. Uh, by the way, if you want to know something more about the modules, uh, we have set, a, we have published a, a reading, a reading number three, okay, that explains a bit uh, more in detail the mechanisms or modules in uh, Node and in, uh, uh, in, the, in the browser, but it's nothing particularly complex. We are already using those, so, but we, we, no, we, we, we find, we just uh, publish some pointers if you want to read more about them module mechanism okay so this is just creating the context and then what should we do well we should uh, uh, inject the value of the language inside the, uh, the context or by creating a provider and this should be set the provider should be uh, uh, created where the state is available so inside app uh, we already had this the use state statement so we can provide this value to my application. So what I'm doing here in app, uh, since app already knows the value of language, it's a state, we can provide this value to all my nested components. So I just added one layer here, okay? Uh, say, say I want to provide a copy of this language state uh, or maybe a state, maybe a prop, maybe a local variable, just a value, that is automatically made available to other, all the other components. 
the nested component, okay? So usually we have the providers at the higher level. Um, okay? And what do we do with the lower component? We consume the value. Okay, one possibility is to use uh, uh, the consumer syntax, the component syntax, where, for example, button and welcome, they are two different components here, they are inserted, and they are nested in two language contexts. So inside button, we, we may want uh, to use the value of the language. First of all, we should import the context object from the same file as before, it's the same object as before. And we render a consumer for that specific context. A consumer object will render, um, will require a callback in the body of the component. It's a, it's a bit strange. Hmm? We are rendering a function, and this function will be called uh, with the current value of the language. So this is where the teleporting arrives. Inside this function, we have this parameter, which is already set, which is always set and updated according to the, to the provider. So this value here is copied and is teleported there. It's not in the props. It doesn't need to be the direct child as we have here it may be anywhere nested i can just recover this value by rendering a consumer that will receive uh, a copy of the value mm -hmm. and of course uh, the result of this callback will be rendered uh, as a result of the component okay i'm missing a closing brace here i think because it's open here it should be closed here there after button or not Yes, that's a syntax uh, uh, error here, and the even here. Okay, so don't copy and paste code from the slide, okay? Um, this is the long version. The shortest version would be to use, uh, use context uh, as a hook. It's, it's the, the, you get the same result. So instead of rendering a language context consumer and setting a callback for receiving the value, you can just uh, use a hook, uh, which is called use context. The parameter of this hook uh, is the name of the, um, of the context object. Uh, so in our case, uh, here. There's the same code uh, using hooks, uh, which I find it more readable and concise, but you may choose. So we are using a use context hook, uh, and the argument is the oh, again the context object. So all, always the context object should be visible and imported. And so right now we, the result is actually the, the updated value of the of the um, of the context value. And so we recover this value, and this value can be used uh, when you want. Okay, for example here. For example, there as a normal variable. So instead of writing props.language, because we don't have the prop, we just extract the language from the context uh, as long as we have the reference. So the, the, the say, most difficult part is uh, remember it to import the context object and we make it available to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we can just use this. Uh, it's not a, a, a complex mechanism. Is not, uh, don't try to use it to bypass the normal nesting of components just for uh, specific use cases. Uh, if you have different values, or different types of information, put them into different context objects uh, so each one can be set and consumed uh, separately. Uh, just one note there is no way to create a, a new context or to provide a context value with the hooks. So hooks are only for consuming. The provider should always be a component uh, where you nest uh, the rest of your application. Hmm? So it's a bit asymmetrical, it's a bit strange, but uh, it's not uh, 
Uh, and if you have, of course, uh, many context variables, you can call the hooks many times as long as uh, all the providers, you are nested on, uh, inside all the providers. So it's not uncommon to see a, um, a, a tree of, of provider nestings. I provided this context, this context, this context, three or four. If you have se several, several context variables, we are a nesting of different context providers so that everybody can access this value. Um, okay. Changing the context can be done by changing the state from which the provider takes the value. And this is usually, usually, it's not a uh, mandatory, but it's the rule, usually we use the state in the same component where we are instantiating the, the provider. Uh, we saw before, we had this, in this example, we have the app component that had a language state uh, and a language provider, a language context provider. Whenever we change the state, the provider is updated and all the consumers will be updated. Um, and how can we update that state? In any way, we all normally update a state. We can update it either from the same component that creates the state, so from app we can use a set language, or if we need to change this from a lower component, we just pass the property for changing it. So there's nothing special. Mm. Uh, in our example, the uh, the button component. Let, let's see the, the, the hooks version. The button component uh, had a, an on-click event that called a toggle language function coming from the app component. It's normal mechanism. Uh, I want uh, some component to change my state. I am passing down a callback that will call my set state in my, in my context. So this not, doesn't change. The context is only used for propagating the value. For modifying the value, I should use the old mechanism of sending you uh, a callback. Hmm. Theoretically, I could also put a callback into a context variable. Hmm. There's nothing against that, but then it becomes uh, really, we, I won't control anymore who changes what. Hmm. So usually we don't do that. Okay, so remember that the state is not part of the context. The context doesn't contain the state. The content only propagates the state, and the state should be in the component that includes the provider. Okay, in, like in this example. Okay, um, that's it. It's not uh, very, I just said it's not very complex, uh, but it's uh, useful to, let's say, to have it ready when we need it. Okay, so the, re the, the, the big topic for today instead is uh, this other mechanism that basically puts together in a more structured way what we are trying to do with the context. So it will use the context mechanism, even if we don't see it explicitly inside, we can understand what it's doing. Uh, and it's trying to resolve in a more structured way what we tried to do last week uh, with the mod, mod state variable. You remember we have the mod, was mod edit or view or change or add. We just had a string and this string will be passed around to every component and every component should do different things uh, according to their state. So first of all, that mod variable is, would be a good candidate for a context in a way. No, because uh, um, its value is needed to many different components. But then uh, uh, it's something more than a context because many components need to change this mode. Every, you know, the add, the save, the cancel, the, change, the edit, uh, the delete button, all of them should have a say about what the mode of the application is about the, the, the mod state. Actually, what we are trying to do here 
we have we are creating a single page application which is what react does that looks like different pages it looks like we are moving through a view page to a change page and moving to a, a page where we can add a form and going back and so on so we are using state mm, you're by uh, by say managing states by hand changing the value carefully and checking the value here and there to simulate different screens different pages okay uh, there is a mechanism that we may help us, but uh, okay we are simulating different pages but from the point of view of the web browser it's always the same page So we are losing some of the browser functionalities like going back and forth. You see that the back button doesn't work here because there is no history. There is no previous page. Okay. Okay. I click on change, but for going back, I don't have the back button because I didn't really change page. I still on the same page that has been written in some way. So the router libraries and we'll see one, one of those uh, which is the most say uh, popular one uh, try to exploit the mechanism in the browser for managing different pages inside react okay uh, and recognizing that a big application has several screens or pages as you want to call them and we should have a we, we can exploit this mechanism for navigating from page to page navigating in the react sense uh, that is just uh, shuffling the render of components but we of course we want to still s always stay on the same real page hmm? L let's see the, the mechanism uh, by the way we what we are seeing is the react router version 6 uh, which was published this year and uh, uh, it's incompatible with the version 5 that we had last year so don't uh, uh, rely on the material of the slides or the video lectures of last year because uh, it changed in the meantime okay uh, and if you see some old projects uh, from last year whether they use the router just uh, don't don't use it li like uh, say uh, by copying it because uh, the the, uh, the version 6 is simpler to use basically uh, but it's also incompatible with the previous one okay something that happens and uh, okay so what are we trying to solve we're trying to co support more complex applications that don't just do one thing managing the list of examples may, maybe do may want to do different things and so there may be different uh, page layouts or page contents uh, in different parts of the application so we should recreate the impression for the user to navigate through different pages allow the user to use the history mechanism going back and forward inside the browser uh, maybe also bookmark uh, a page because right now the only url that you could bookmark is the home page because everything is inside there but if you go to a detailed page and uh, you bookmark them and when you go to that address it will lead you to the home page of the website basically because there's no way to remember that you were here for example the uh, the url is always the same what changes are only internal states but internal states cannot be bookmarking or saved in some way hmm? uh, but if some information about the internal state would be available in the location bar then we would uh, remember this page instead of you know going every time to the starting page um, and so we are using the location URLs to manage this information about uh, the page of the application we are currently displaying so instead of hiding this information into the mode variable we show this information into the URL location bar okay so the location bar would be a good place to store information about which part of the application we are in the location bar is always accessible to all the components because it's a browser information 
so it would be automatically available and easy to modify by everybody of course we need to modify and use it in the react way not just by setting window.location equal to something that will you know, uh, destroy all our code and also be very careful that uh, we are talking about pages we are talking about switching pages we are talking about changing the url address but we don't want to reload all the JavaScript of the application every time we click. If I write a different address here, slash something, and uh, let's go to the network. Okay, so I downloaded the application, I'm playing with that and so on. If I change to a different URL, the browser will go to a separate page and will reload all the application. So this file bundle.js that contains all my code, so maybe two megabytes and may grow, of course, if <laughs> we have bigger applications, will be downloaded again every time I change this address, if I'm using the normal linking mechanism in the browser. So I want to be able to manage the URL without telling the browser reload a different page. By the way, what happens here is that it could be strange because I changed the URL in some way, but the application is still the same. Okay, this is a, a feature of React that we are we will exploit that whatever the URL is, uh, it will always render, it will always return the same value. Okay, the same application so that we can use this value within the application it doesn't change the application we just don't want it to reload okay so always keep an eye and we'll see it mm, more and more and when we also add the, the, the server components uh, always keep an eye on the on the network uh, side never the application should only be loaded once hmm? both for performance reasons we don't want to reload every time and also for state maintaining if we load the application all the state variables are changed if I delete some exam and they would change the URL here this deletion is forgotten of course because I'm reloading application that will really reinitialize everything okay um, but and this is a mechanism we see in many websites. For example, okay, React comes from, from Facebook, of course. So Facebook use, are using this mechanism. Uh, if, if you go to the home page of, of, of the slash page of, of Facebook, it will show you some content. If you have a slash, uh, some profile name, it will give you a different content with the profile, with the history, or, or, or that user. Uh, you may have, uh, as a, prof a user profile or a page profile and there are different uh, URLs and they will render different uh, uh, it's always Facebook it's always the same application but according to the address you are shown different paths and this is useful because we can also 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 save and share or bookmark or you know uh, copy the link and uh, refer to a specific profile of, of a specific person you don't have to say, okay, go to the main website and then search for this person. You have the URL that will send you directly to that person's profile page. Hmm? And if you monitor what you are doing when you're using an application like, like Facebook, which of course is using React, uh, you will see that there's no reloads of the page. The first page is slow to load because they have to load all the application. But then when you move across different pages, uh, the browser will load the, the assets, okay, the messages, the images, and so on, but will not load again the whole application because it's using this internal routing mechanism. Um, okay, so it can be used in in, uh, in many in many cases uh, when okay when we want to show different layouts, also different actions. In our example of the exams, we may have a different page for viewing a different page for editing one for the ad form and so on hmm? we, we can see it 
so the idea is let's try to use the urls to uh, embed some information that uh, decides uh, which layout to show and uh, enables us to recreate that specific layout if we go back to that url in a later time so the url should contain possibly as enough information to be able to go back to that page if we close the browser and open it all and open it again mm -hmm. um, and we use it we are using the the history mechanism that the browser already has mm -hmm. uh, this mechanism works uh, as we showed before uh, because uh, uh, react will always return the same index html regardless of the query regardless of the of the location Okay, so these are not calling that they are not returning different files. They are always returning the same file, but this information will be used by the router library. Mm -hmm. And so we go to the specific li library that we are using, no? React Router. Um, there are many of them. This is the most popular one. It's, it's also the one that is, uh, let's say, suggested by the official React uh, documentation. Um, whenever we what does the router do it manages all the actions that change the url and totally rewrite or change the default behavior of the browser when the browser normally sees a change in the url it will destroy the current page stop all the javascript in the current page load a new html load the JavaScript associated with that and we start from scratch okay uh, when we have a, a router library installed uh, we are blocking this mechanism we will never use a link uh, we will never use a form submit uh, that change uh, let's say that let the browser change the URL uh, because that would be suicide for the application it will destroy itself we use an internal mechanism where we prevent the browser from changing page uh, and convince the browser to stay still in the same page but you only use the location for storing information that react uh, would use to switch in and out components let's display this part let's not display this part and so on so having a sort of a switch a set of ifs uh, to display or not display a component depending on what we have written in the in the location yeah No, okay. Uh, so I what what were if the user changes the URL manually, of course the browser takes over and uh, okay, it's always uh, it's all, the user is always in control. What we are do we we're saying is that inside the application we try not to use that mechanism. So for example, the links uh, should be not normal links, uh, but links uh, where the router is aware and will transform their action, their default action. Okay, so all the action inside the application should use the routing mechanism. Of course, if the user changes that, or by mistake, if we put a normal link in the HTML code, that link will work as normally and will lead to a new page. Hmm? Yeah. Um, okay. So, React Router. Uh, React Router is a library that is, let's say, at least uh, three different uh, uh, or two or three different flavors uh, one is the react router dom which is supposed to work in the browsers and the other is react router native that is made for react native applications okay so in our case uh, we are in the in the web so we are using the react router dom library we just need to install it in, a, in our in our project and it will pull in of course the react router which is the, the core library with the main function okay so we just need to install in our project this React Router DOM uh, library. All the information is on this website here, React Router, where we can find the documentation. Uh, again, it's always div the, um, divided into a tutorial or main concepts that are useful to understand what is happening. And uh, some API reference uh, that gives you 
information about all the specific components and also specific uh, hooks uh, that you may use okay um, I find this useful to to have this main components page no what is that uh, yeah uh, in this API reference uh, we, we are going to see uh, all these concepts uh, they're saying for example for for the routing functionality these are the main components and then there are these other functions these are the main components and then there are these others and the the other one the second list is for more advanced or internal usage so basically what they're saying to us is that uh, you just have one component two one hook here two other components a couple of hooks and one hook there so the library is basically five or six components and two or three hooks so the, the user visible part uh, for for managing the router so mm, we don't need all the documentation that is there they're always telling you uh, low level apis uh, is not something that we need to to care about okay so uh, how does it work um, it gives us mechanisms for moving through the application to the different pages so we are not using uh, um, links anymore we are not using a but we are using link as a component to change pages we are not changing some global state but we are navigating to a different page so there are mechanisms for changing the URL and there are basically these three link nav link navigate and the use navigate hook which is related to the nav navigate component so we can the, these are the mechanisms for changing the URL and then there are mechanisms for inspecting the current URL and deciding what to render and there are basically these two route and routes routes is a sort of a switch uh, between different uh, route components uh, for which uh, you, know, the, the, you can choose uh, the one that matches the best matches the path uh, the URL path that we are so one is moving and the other is rendering and there are there are some some hooks uh, to um, to be able to access some dynamic parts of the URL Okay, some value embedded in URLs. Like we said before, we want the URL to be able uh, to bring us to a specific page. So maybe we have a list of uh, products or a list of exams and we want to go to the page of a specific exam. So the URL will contain the exam code or the product ID. And so we need to be able to access this parameter which is a variable inside, uh, inside the URL. And this can be done with some hooks. Okay, and uh, all of that uh, should be all the application in order to, in order to be able to work should be wrought in a comp component which is called a browser router. So we can put browser router immediately at the highest level of the app component, so that everything else will be in included, nested inside browser router. Okay. Uh, we don't say it but browser router actually is a context provider okay it uses the, the context mechanism so that it, it, it must nest all the application so that all the application inside can use this information all the comp all these components inside are consumers for the information okay we don't see it explicitly but that's why we need this uh, wrapping at the high level hmm. so we have these two words uh, rendering and moving hmm? let's go to the let's see them uh, one by one um, so first of all we should contain all the application in a router uh, normally we use this browser router component that uses uh, mangles and modify the urls uh, for moving across pages okay this is the normal uh, normal usage we should just import browser router from react router dom if you want to make it short just rename it as router but um, 
there are some configurations um, let's say this requires the mechanism that we saw before that different URLs will always return the same application the same JavaScript application and this means that the, also the server should be configured in this way okay um, if you want to run our application on a server for which we don't have any control over its configuration we can use this mechanism because if we change the URL the server will give you a 404 response say okay there's no page here um, and so there is a, an alternative routing mechanism which is called hash router that stores the information not in the URLs fragments with slashes okay uh, uh, localhost slash uh, uh, exams slash add or slash edit slash one two three in the uh, but encode the same information after the hash sign in the home URL so we'll always be localhost slash and then hash something the hash sign is used in URL for moving inside different parts of the single page for internal anchor uh, we are we are say uh, overriding this mechanism for storing this information it's not recommended uh, so unless you have compatibility needs uh, so we are you need to use uh, servers for which you have no control or browsers that are very very old and then th so in those two cases you can use try to use hash router but otherwise uh, it, in modern settings you should always use browser router there's also another interesting uh, uh, version which is the, called the static router which is uh, uh, for a very different context when uh, we run react in the server so there are some mechanisms for right now all react is running in the browser the server does nothing the server will only give me the javascript that's it but uh, uh, there are some settings in which we want uh, or we may want to render the the components already in the server so running the react library in, in partially at least in the server and then give to the browser already the components uh, that are already rendered you know, in a way so there are some extensions some other libraries different from react one very famous remix uh, um, that do this SSR server side rendering and in this case uh, uh, this static router is able to communicate with the server asking for the server a different version of the page by rendering it in a different way okay so this static router will be used with static rendering if we are using some some other library that extends react in the sense it's not for us it doesn't work with the normal react method okay so we are stick with browser router uh, okay this is, a, this is an example of how to modify the server configuration but next week we will we'll, uh, start uh, working with the servers so uh, what is the router doing is selecting different portion of the application to be shown or hidden or not rendered thanks to a mechanism which is a, a big switch statement actually um, the switch uh, statement is called routes and the different switch cases the switch, uh, switch options are called route without the s okay okay it's not a switch it's a match statement something like that just beware there was a component called the switch uh, in version 5 and this component doesn't exist anymore so when you see switch uh, in version 5 you see that this code <laughs> is not compatible with the current one now it's called routes routes is a component that will contain several route elements and each route specify a path to be activated so actually and this path will match with the location URL in the browser so what happens is then uh, when react sees the routes component it expects a, series, a set of one or more route 
components nested inside it and we select one of those only one which one the one whose path will match the url so it's so, so uh, it likes writing if location equal to slash render this one else if location equal to news render this one and so on and the second that the second uh, property of the route component is an element property that contains a fragment on jsx any anything you want uh, of course uh, it's an attribute that will contain javascript objects so you should have braces here okay it's an attribute that will contain um, a, a, an element a component a jsx fragment that's it basically okay uh, yes 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 there, there, there's this is the basic mechanism and then there are a set of details of, of how, it, how it's working okay so it's not a, a string match there are, there are some defaults and so on so we'll see them uh, but the basic mechanism is just this one uh, we change it URL and uh, the page will change content it will behave like this one or behave, behave like that one uh, there is a, an algorithm for deciding uh, which uh, route matches best these are not regular expression okay in the previous version version 5 they were regular expression and they create a lot of problems uh, right now they all the strings are evaluated they are compared with the uh, with the URL and the most specific match will be selected uh, there's one property here is that the order in which you list the routes is irrelevant okay so you can make mix and match the order the only thing that counts is the the specificity of the matching and not the order of the elements hmm? which is strange but it doesn't they go they don't go in order the router will collect all the urls all the paths and then decide uh, a path what is a path uh, it's a string that uh, the router will match against the URL location and uh, a path uh, is made of different segments okay separated by slashes nothing new here a segment may be a static segment so a normal string a dynamic segment a placeholder where we can put different values or a special syntax is the star segment that will match anything in, the, in that position. Okay, one or more segments in that position. This is just the syntax here is just made of these three components. So it's a sequence of segments con con concatenated, and each of them may be. So, for example, users slash user ID will match all locations of the form users slash ABC or users slash one, two, three. Okay, so slash users slash something, some string. This string will be extracted and stored into a user ID parameter value that can be used through the hooks by the component render. Um, docs slash will match both the docs path and any sub path. So docs ABC, docs something else and so on. Uh, slash will tend to match the the home page and so on this is the simplest one because it's just a simple segment uh, simple so yeah segment uh, it's a constant one so we'll match that exact URL uh, <clears throat> usually these paths are case insensitive if you want to make them case sensitive you should add uh, um, an option to the route I don't know why they choose this default but uh, okay there you go um, these routes uh, can be nested so you can have a route inside the route inside the route component and each of them can specify a portion of the path and the router will 
when uh, we have a routes container, the router will look recursively into all the nested routes, route, singular, uh, components, and collect the path. And everything you are nesting route inside the router, uh, you are actually concatenating the segments, right? Quite natural. Once, once you have the list of all the concatenated segments, then you do the matching with the, uh, with the, with the current URL. So it's a, it's a way to build progressively the URL that you want to match. And by the way, this nesting can be done all in the same component. So you have one, say, mother component, the app, uh, that contains all the routes uh, with all the nestings. And then, of course, defers to many different components for rendering the different parts. Or maybe you can match the first part, and then in a second component, in a child component, you may have another routes container with the route uh, elements um, sorry, that specify that, that behavior or that specific part of the application. And so this nesting is, is direct nesting route inside route in the same route container, or in direct nesting, we have a routes here that renders a route. This route renders an element, and that element would contain another route uh, with its own route components. Uh, and the paths are concatenated also across different components. Okay. Um, all of this is examined, and then the best uh, option is selected. The best matching, which is the one that matches most segments. Um, and then there's a, a mechanism where um, when you're nesting routes inside the routes, uh, um, we want to decide where to nest uh, the children. And there's a special component which is called outlet that is a place where the children are rendered. We need an example. Okay, maybe we go directly into code because uh, let's open a very simple project. So let's go back, create React app, uh, set demo router. Let's make it installed. I should have done this before, but okay. While it, while it's uh, downloading, but it's already this one is already too complex. So I, I we, we it's better to create it. Uh, Come on. Okay, we are near there. Demo router. Let's open the app. Demo router. PM start. No, not. Uh, before starting application, we should add the routing library, okay? npm install react router router DOM. Okay, and then we can start the application and start editing that. Okay, so we are in the app, we just override everything is there. So uh, we want to use routing, so we must first uh, wrap everything into the browser router component, first of all. So we must import, import uh, browser router 
from React router DOM. And then we write, wrap everything into a browser router component. First of all. Then we can start rendering some routes. So we can decide routes. Uh, we can customize what is rendered according to the path. So the routes component is you know, the, the matching algorithm, and the route components are the options. Right? So route, maybe path is equal to slash. Then we render the an element. Uh, which is, uh, I don't know, maybe h1 home. We must import also route from the router DOM. Okay, I can put some uh, JSX in line, usually for readability, we, we, we refer to another component, but just for understanding the mechanism here. And we may have a, another route, path equal to, uh, I don't know, about element equal to element h2 about. Okay, so route doesn't, in this case, routes are not nested are alternative okay they are siblings at the same level so we are closing the route tag because the, it, it doesn't have any content if i'm running this if i save this i see that the application is now showing home because the url is slash if the url would change to about it would show the about page. Now I'm doing the wrong way because when I change the URL, I'm reloading the application. We don't know how to move across the different parts of the, of the route. So just understand how the rendering works. If I write anything else, I get uh, an empty page and a warning saying, okay, there are no routes that match in, that are matching this location. Okay. Um, so this is normal if we have a set of alternative renders and only one of them will be selected. This is good if uh, they are disjoint in a way, they are separate. But probably in our application we want, uh, for example, the the title no, to be always visible. And then some other context, content, sorry, to be customized. So when I'm selecting a route, I, I would say, okay, if I am in this route, let's try to render this part and then see how the route goes. And uh, the rest uh, should be customized accor according to the route itself. And uh, this can be done by nesting routes. So every time I nest a route inside another, I can have an element for rendering the external route. And then the internal routes will select uh, some child content and this child comp content would be injected here okay uh, we see this example that we are going to recreate we have matching the slash and rendering something called layout which is maybe the skeleton of the page 
and then we have some internal routes you see that there is no slash anymore here because we want to this route is nested inside there and so we are concatenating this with that so slash about uh, we render an element about uh, a dashboard we render an element called dashboard that are both nested inside the main path there so what are what we are really rendering for example in the about case is this about component okay and this layout component but how these two components mix, mix together there is this outlet special component which is a component defined by the router that is telling me where to put the children so what the router is doing here is I'm rendering the element layout I'm so sorry first I will match the route I, I decided about slash about is the, the current route okay is the current location so I need to render about inside layout so we'll start by rendering layout and when I find the special component outlet I will inject in this outlet the children the about component okay so it's easier done than said uh, we could uh, modify our application let's call layout for example we define a component that does all the layout for example the main uh, so we may have uh, uh, for example uh, I don't know oops something like an h1 uh, uh, website title I don't know a line uh, we can we can be we can have a menu or whatever and then uh, below the title I should have the, the actual content and so it's the outlet component that we render outlet of course is imported again from react router that will contain The real content of the page so we must modify the routes so that uh, we have a ex external route which is uh, the root equal to slash that only renders this layout component and then I'm not closing the tag route because I'm using it to nest something else so for example we move it there they are nested and let's remove this slash here I'm not sure about this So what I'm doing here is saying uh, everything matching the slash path will render a layout component. This layout component may have a content, a real, a, an actual content inside that is inserted in the place of the outlet, placeholder. This is just a placeholder, baby. And it will be one of the children of this route. So in the case where it's slash, I'm rendering home. In the case where it's about, I'm rendering the about page, but we also assess the, 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 the external layout is always visible. And if there's something else here, uh, of course, again, we are not showing anything. Because first we collect all the complete routes and then we do the matching. Okay, so we are not matching slash and then whatever may be not mm, whatever we have inside will not be the match okay first we collect the routes then we do the match yes there was a question
yes e yes um, so the question was uh, instead instead of using outlets uh, could they put the routes uh, in there of course we are with another routes uh, selector and the two routes yes it would work uh, the only problem is in this way the layout component will uh, need to know what to do okay so in this way we are separating the uh, the only goal of this layer, this component in this case would be to create the framework. And uh, there's an empty space, a big empty space that needs to be filled by somebody else. So this component doesn't need to know what goes there inside. It's uh, a pure layout component, let's say. Okay? And uh, the routes to put there are defined uh, elsewhere. No? It's, uh, it's a sort of a injection of a content inside another container so both solutions are, are, uh, are valid it depends on uh, where you have the knowledge about the content okay um, if you have maybe a for the say top level layout uh, that may be applicable to the whole website uh, then maybe it's better that this component doesn't know it hmm? uh, it doesn't need to know and all the logic will be elsewhere but both are going to work hmm? and there are also uh, other other details that we are going to see hmm? but this is the, the basic mechanism whenever we have a, a, a set of uh, sibling rules uh, route sorry sibling routes uh, one of them will be rendered whenever we have nested routes uh, all the chain will be rendered by using the outlet object in order to insert one inside the other Okay, um, this is the basic, basic mechanism, but then things are going to be a bit more complicated. So we can think, uh, we can have a break right now. Then we see some more details about how the router works uh, and try to work uh, on our uh, exam application uh, to see whether it can benefit from this new mechanism. Okay, so see you after the break.